there are there there are elements on the left groups like Media Matters, for instance, that will just pump out fake news, and YouTube just says yes. So you know, uh, we 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 had a uh, Media Matters wrote about us recently, claiming that because Jack Murphy, who was on the show, said Donald Trump gave concrete examples of voter fraud. He didn't say Donald Trump gave proof. He said examples of. So I believe that's what he said. Maybe I'm, I'm getting wrong. They claimed that we were pushing disinformation and then demanded YouTube demonetize the content. So the, 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 the show is still monetized. But the fact that they're trying to go after us simply because we're talking about what Trump said is a, is, is a level of depravity you don't see from the right to the left. The right isn't going after the left and calling corporations to get them stripped and removed because they don't believe in it. Maybe the, you, they used to. The liberal right, they did, definitely did. media is more focused on the way things look that their that their listeners or their viewers, uh, their viewers actually learn by watching, whereas conservative people learn by listening. And so that's why they're drawn to more radio. And you see like Rachel Maddow with her her perfect posture and, and done up hair and like it's all they call him the orange man. Like they're talking about the way he looks. But so it's less about I think that's an interesting um, observation that might be something to the way people learn maybe the left tries to claim that talk radio succeeded on the right because people on the right are dumb and just follow the leader and so you'd get a Bill O'Reilly or, or a conservative personality and then they would just you know cluck along following I don't think that's true I think that's actually the left the left turns on CNN and accepts it all as law as if it's true and then you can see how the guardians like my pillow guy pushes, you know, martial law when we don't even know what's on those papers. Like, we don't know why it says that. For all we know, it says invoking martial law in the event. And then the part that's missing says something happens would be really bad and we should never do that. We it, don't know what the remainder of that sentence was. It was all was. about what it looked like. Whereas yeah. like James right. O'Keefe, well, it's all about what you hear. Well, another element to really kind of comprehend here is that when someone is trying to silence people, they don't have the moral high ground. So when you have examples by Media Matters, we're also seeing other reports right now of uh, CNN, M NBC News, New York Times trying to go after Signal and other encrypting messaging apps. When we see Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez talking about we need to ban Parler, we need to put people on list, we need to censor the internet, we need to rein in the media, we're seeing individuals who are so scared of ideas of them being challenged with just words sounds that they have to punitively silence and make sure that those ideas don't even get discussed or even thought about they're at such a point in in, in their life where they want to control what you can even think so when you're coming from that point of view and you're surrounding yourself with the the biggest apparatuses of the police state when you just a couple weeks ago you were totally apprehensive against the police state now they're surrounding themselves with what is it 25,000 armed troops that have shoot to kill orders that are transferring Washington DC into a fortress when you have th those kind of larger institutional powers fomenting themselves fortifying themselves in you really have something to to worry about and consider moving forward that, that's why I said they're not playing by any rule set no they're just like, oh, the cops are all bad. And then once the cops start arresting, Trump supporters are like, the cops are our friends. Well, it's a, you really don't want to do violence against the government. I think it's an example of why, because it freaks out the politicians and then they surround themselves with 25,000 shoot to kill cops. Yeah, well, it depends who's anyway. committing who's committing the violence, Who? Wh what political cause is behind the, the violence. people that storm the Capitol. Uh, uh, that's about. one example. But there's other examples of, of entire police departments being sieged. There's was, there was other events of, of buildings being lit on fire with people inside of them. There was other events where people got shot and killed uh, during the middle of protest uh, just a couple of weeks ago. That I would say that's political violence. It's, it's like municipal there was political violence. violence. The only problem is it was called out by the right wingers when it was happening on the left. But when it's happening on the right, it's called out by right yeah. wingers and left wingers, rightfully so. But it should always be called out because when you use violence politically, everyone yep. loses and you're destroying the dialogue that that could prevent it. There are, there are some people who would prefer to live in a Mad Max style world. Like there some there are some people that want to watch the world burn and there are some people that genuinely believe if I can't have it no one can and they'd rather burn it all to the ground than lose the fight. That's crazy. I don't think that's true. That people believe that? Not that I don't there think they some really people, maybe just, they fantasize a, I don't think any who would want to saying, destroy I'm not the saying, world. I'm not saying the, the majority, but they exist. It's not about destroying the world. Do you know people like that? Have you have like have you been reading the news and following social media? Well, you hear like like uh, what do you call it like um, hyperbole? But there I've people, never met anyone like that. The, if you the, the way I describe it is when you open Twitter, just picture a guy screaming at the top of his lungs. That's what Twitter is. You scroll scroll through everyone. Like, ah! There are people on the left and the right 
There are people on the right who are saying they will not. There, there was a voicemail left. This guy got arrested, leaving a voicemail saying that they will never allow a Democrat to go into these buildings and that they would do some really, really bad things I can't repeat. Do you know what happens if there's an actual civil war? It is. Look, look at Aleppo. You, ever, you guys ever see the photos of before and after in Aleppo? It's, it's yeah. a town in Syria. Beautiful city. After the war, rubble and death. Dude, if there was a real civil war, they would be targeting laser targeted drone strikes on houses. Like they know where you live. Do no. not go to war with the U.S. government. It's, 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 it's not about the U.S. government. Do not government. go to war civil, with the far left because the U.S. government is backing them. A civil war is two factions fighting over control of one government or in some definitions, factions trying to leave or split a government. It's not like there's three factions. There's the establishment and the populist left and the populist right. We don't exactly know what's going to happen, but elements of the military and elements of law enforcement are being split among the, the left tribe and the right tribe lines. So it's not going to be laser drone strikes. It's going to be, it would literally be military fighting military or people just fighting people. But I also think we need to consider when we talk about this is the generations of warfare. We're not in that, you know, look, we don't fight with swords anymore. We don't fight with bows and arrows. I mean, I guess you still kind of could use a compound bow in warfare. It's probably effective in certain guerrilla war, ta war tactics. But for the most part, war changes. You know, I, I love that saying from Fallout, the video game, war never changes. It actually changes a whole lot. The okay? weapons change, but the we war used, stays the same. We used same. to hit each other with fists, then rocks. Then we, we made swords and clubs. It, then we got horses, then we got, you know, guns, then we got missiles, and then we've escalated over and over again, and now we're in propaganda and information warfare. So the point I'm trying to make is I see the comments on social media from people who are saying they would rather conflict, chaos, blown up buildings and all that if it means they don't give up and, the, and, 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 they, and you know, their ideology persists or whatever. But that's why it's so important to push back non-violently. Yeah. I mean, the whole even talking about civil war makes me uncomfortable because it does, I think, inspire some yeah. of the crazies. And they do exist. I, I, I don't th I, I agree. Like, they're not the largest sum by any means. It's probably less than a half of a percentage point. But they do cause a lot of the problems. And so we have to figure out a way to address it. And I yeah. think it is condemning it well most of the people calling for it have never really seen conflict when you look at the, the a lot of people who did see warfare who saw people trying to kill each other and saw people die they, that's the last thing that they want they're haunted by it they have ptsd and a lot of these vocal you know proponents a lot of these most violent voices or voices that have never been in combat don't even know what it is and it needs to be called out because again we all lose once that happens well and and stop talking about things as if we're currently in a war because we usually hear some of that on the left and it's coming from the anti-cop folks who are claiming we're at war with the police they're shooting us in the middle of the street it's like no we, we can have reasonable conversations about police reform if you'd like but let's not pretend that cops are just roaming the streets of whatever city you're in and they're just randomly shooting people that's obviously not happening so when people talk like that it does again it's sort of that self-fulfilling prophecy like i feel like they're pushing in a direction where we shouldn't want to go they're not doing it for that purpose they're doing it to win arguments well, this, but this, it's this, dangerous. this is my criticism of aoc you know, we, we yeah. can criticize Trump for his, you know, bombastic nature. But what AOC is saying right now is absolutely inflaming everything. I've been saying for the past, you know, a couple of weeks now, we everyone needs to calm down, meditate, go read a book, go out to nature, stay with your loved ones. And even a month or two before that, stay home, make money. That was something Mike Cernovich said, and I agreed with. Like, now's the time to, for everyone, everyone to chill. But there's a reality to this. I, I, I know a lot of people don't like hearing the phrase civil war, but what would you call it? When you have escalating street battles for several years, one one group, one partisan group using every legal apparatus at their disposal to remove the president, ultimately now still trying to. And then it, it culminates with a year of mass rioting across the country defended by one by proponents of one political faction. Now you have proponents of one other political faction storming the U.S. Capitol building. So what you know, I think we're absolutely on that ground. It's certainly conflict. We're definitely not civil war. We're at a cultural war, right? And there is 100% percent there's when, violence. When would it be a civil war? A civil war would be a little bit more uh, engaged with both sides. I mean, l l we should not pretend that both the right and the left are doing it at, at equal levels as far as you know manpower, for example. And we're not seeing it widespread on both sides. And I do think that that is a, a part of the issue. And there's also... 
there's I don't know if we could say that there is an ideal yet that both sides are fighting for versus a person they're fighting against. I think there's certainly elements definitely on the left where they've got ideas that they're fighting for. Uh, on the right, I, I don't know that yet. Well, they're fighting against... They're like fighting that. against other ideas, potentially. Yeah. But again, the fighting is not really happening here's, from the right. Here's the main issue. I'll, I'll put it this way, as, as I've often put it. If this does develop into full-scale into full hot conflict then in 50 years, they will describe the moments of January 6th as well into the Civil War. Meaning we, we can go way back to the Berkeley riots where, you know, Antifa showed up and were, were bashing old Trump supporters and throwing explosives at them. So when I saw that stuff, I say, I, I usually say it like this. If everything were to stop right now and de-escalate, people would say there wasn't a Civil War. If it does continue to escalate, then we are absolutely in a Civil War mm -hmm. right now. One faction just stormed the Capitol with the misguided and rather absurd attempt at some kind of shutting down of the of the electoral vote count process. The people are saying it on, on, on these videos that are getting released now. More and more videos are coming out. And they're saying things like, where's the count happening? You know, we, there's only one of them. Or, there's, it's only one person. We can stop them. There's thousands of us. One video where a lady's giving instructions about where the Senate chambers are and how to get there. If you get to the point where you have a political faction storming into the Capitol building, to subvert the, the political process. That's literally the borderline definition of what civil war is. If it's inspired by delusion, do you count it as civil yes, war? Yes, because everybody thinks their dictator is right. Everybody thinks their leader is the, is the glorious leader. You look at things that would happen, like you look at what happened in, I'll, I'll tell you the, the, main, the main difference. The difference between the rise of dictatorship and a civil war is whether or not one side is armed and prepared to fight back. So you look at communist China, the, the communists just abused and obliterated and murdered and, and destroyed. You look at World War II Germany, there was a lot of fight fighting between factions in Weimar Germany, but ultimately the communist socialists fled because the legal system, uh, at least to a certain degree I'm reading now, many of these you know, people in, in, in government really liked them. They, they prefer the Nazi party over the communists. If you come now to where we're at now, it could possibly be there won't be a civil war, because the left controls the cultural establishment and, uh, you know, basically the entirety of the federal government, except for the, you know, uh, yeah. Supreme Court for now. If it just goes that direction and conservatives just eventually get steamrolled, then no one's going to call it a civil war. Now, now, Jason, I would agree with you. We're not in, you know, a civil war. A lot of people use that kind of language hyperbolically to also get clicks. We have to understand that. But we have to understand uh, the, the future wars are, are fought not with bullets, tanks, or guns. They're fought with subversion, indoctrination, influence. And when we look at the term fifth generational warfare, I think there is something to consider about what is happening culturally, what is happening through social media, what is happening on the mainstream media, on Hollywood, that is having an effect that in, in part is leading to, I believe, a larger conflict Maybe it's a conflict of ideas, but those ideas are paramount when it comes to the future of our children, the future of this country, and them turning out to be individuals that are self-harming, self-defeating, mm -hmm. and, and, and people who, you know, destroy themselves internally through their bad actions that are promoted. So that's something also to kind of largely consider here. And if you were a strategic kind of enemy, what would you rather do? Would you rather have a hot war where you have, where there's blood, where there's gore, there's, there's so much violence, or would you rather have a war where you don't even have to shoot a gun? So, so that's something also so I, worth considering. I yeah. have the University of San Diego uh, art, uh, article from Dr. Wasim Ahmad Qureshi, Fourth and Fifth Generation Warfare, Technology and Perceptions. And they basically talk about in, in fourth generational warfare, it's, it's the blurring of lines between politics and, you know, uh, uh, and conflict and civilians. So a lot of people describe what we've been going through as fourth generational war because of the low intensity conflict and violence. Things like Antifa smashing windows, burning things down, spray painting, you know, things about liberals. But what we're actually fully entrenched in is coming off of fourth generational warfare and moving heavily into fifth generational warfare. So fifth generational warfare is manipulation, perception, information, propaganda, etc. Like Luke was just saying, there was a reason why in the past you used force against somebody because you had no other means to gain control of a region or a group of people or a resource. Today, it's extremely easy. Propaganda and manipulation. That's why TikTok is so dangerous. 
controlled by Chinese interests and influencing our young people, telling them what to think and feel and what to do. And it works. So right now you have online one side clearly losing in every respect. They're losing physical fights. Now, don't get me wrong. The Proud Boys, you know, have beaten up Antifa pretty badly. And some of them have gone to prison for it. But if you look at the amount of damage Antifa has done and Black Lives Matter has done, they've caused massive damage across this country. While symbolically storming the Capitol was probably the worst thing we, we've seen yet, there's way more institutional and, and damage to the general public of this country caused by the left and Black Lives Matter. So in terms of how much we are seeing the left push, substantially more, 80, 20, 80% 80 of, the, of the pushing in the conflict is coming from the left. Cultural institutions, including news media, almost entirely dominated by the left right now. They frame everything as though the right is bad. The right being banned left and right, and all they do is beg their establishment conservative, you know, or establishment Republicans to re repeal 230 or something, which never happens and won't happen. So ultimately what happens is, in my opinion, Republican politicians are too stupid to realize what's happening around them. And thus, they are now having their constituents purged. They will no longer be able to win a battle of ideas in the fifth generational conflict because they sat back and sat on their hands and did nothing. The left was fighting a fifth generational war while conservatives were just sitting there saying like, well, now let's have a conversation about it. When you nationalize elections, well, but when you look right. at the House results, for example, I mean, the Democrats were supposed to win a whole bunch of House seats and they didn't. Quite the opposite. And I think that, you know, that goes to certainly the rural versus urban city divide. And it's definitely a right versus left at that point. But I do think the closer you get to the people in most of the country, the Republicans tend to do better when facing the crazy on the left. Now, when it's both moderates going or perceived as moderates going up against each other, then it really is. That's local yeah. but politics. Think, but think about AOC saying they're all white supremacists and Nazis and then raising millions of dollars and getting 12 million followers. Lies work. And the conservatives aren't playing on the same battlefield. They're getting wiped out. Kind of reminds me of the 60s. Like uh, Nixon had the, the, well, Lyndon B. Johnson had the, the left of the 60s was like the military industrial complex using the media. And back then they had just television and they used it to manipulate. They had Project Mockingbird that was like the CIA was paying and, and extorting these media companies to pass their lies and manipulation. And the hippies and the Black Panthers were just subverted and they were totally pressed and beaten down, kind of like you would say the right is being right now. They were organizing, but they couldn't contend with that media. And I just read 40 people died in the civil rights movement, 41 people. So it was, we would never call that a civil war ever. No one's ever even thought to, I've never even thought to refer to that era as a civil war. It was just unrest. It was like what we're going through now. I, that's what I see now. Yeah, but I, I, I guess that was still remnants of the actual civil war. You still had the Democrats, for the most part, up until a certain point, being the party of the Klan and Jim Crow and the racists. So it was almost like it never ended. This is the crazy thing. You know, I just I, I watching that new movie that just came out. Have you seen it? News of the World? Mm -hmm. have, you, have you heard of it? No. Uh, I watched about half of it so far. And it's, it's good. You don't you didn't like it? Uh. Well, I'm halfway through and I'm entertained. I'm not going to pretend it's the greatest movie in the world, but it's interesting because uh, Tom Hanks, he's, he plays a, a former Confederate soldier in Texas and you've got Union soldiers in Texas and you can hear the rhetoric from the, the, the local you know, Southerners, how they feel about the North and what really drives their anger. And it's interesting to see this movie highlight. These people are saying rich Northerners trying to force us, you know, t tell us how we have to live and what we have to do. Obviously, Civil War was very much about slavery. But there was a, a, a big element of that's not too dissimilar to what's happening today. But anyway, I, I, what, what, the reason I bring it up is in some ways, the Civil War never ended. You know, this is the crazy thing. Reconstruction, en Reconstruction ended in 1876 when there was this hotly contested uh, uh, battle over the presidency and opposing electors were sent to D.C. and they didn't know what to do. So they elected a panel to just basically negotiate what was going to happen to avoid the outbreak of the Civil War again. And what they decided basically was to end Reconstruction and they would give the Republican the presidency. From there, you ended up with the Klan. These elements still existed. They still fought. It made its way into the civil rights movement. And now we have something weird and different, but it's still the tribes and the cultures are so dramatically different in these big cities in California, in New York, in Chicago versus in southern cities and southern states. But more importantly, the urban versus rural divide is extremely profound and dramatic. And you've got, because of the internet, the ideological split becoming more and more extreme 
Maybe the reality is there's elements of what this country went through that never went away and it constantly keep getting seeded in some fashion in different ways. Or maybe it's just this country is way too big and people in different states want to live in different ways. So someone in New York trying to pass a law on how people in West Virginia got to live, that's not going to fly with people in West Virginia. They're no, like, I mean, that's a whole guiding principle behind states' rights. But it's being ripped away. It, it, it is, but that's why we have elections. And I, I, I don't believe that these elections are uh, a lost cause for Republicans. I think in two years, we're going to see that shift. And historically, we tend to. Well, I think in two years, the Republicans are going to be much more progressive. Well, another thing to kind of realize here, the, the base of the Republicans is being wiped out, whether through opioids, obesity, self-hate, suicide, self-harm. The flyover states are affected by those things more than a lot of the city areas. And when you look at the, the base, it, they're slowly but surely killing themselves off in many instances, especially with the high suicide rates. So that's also I, something I kinda, to consider. I kind of like to think they're actually being strangled out by these these trade agreements set up by namely Democrats, where they took many of these manufacturing plants and sent them overseas. Trump was one of the reasons why. Oh, no, actually, I should, I should stop there and say the Koch brothers and Republicans were very much in favor of it for a long time as well. I think that's why you get Donald Trump, because he said to these people in these in these places where the factories have been ripped away, I'm going to renegotiate for you. I'm going to fix this problem. That's what people wanted. So I look at a lot of these towns. I've been, I, I spent a lot of time looking at dying towns because I was thinking of like, where could we move and set up a studio with good internet that actually has some infrastructure? And it's, it's sad to see. I, I read about a bunch of different cities in, you know, in middle America that were once thriving. And the factory got sent to Mexico, factory got sent to China, and now their population's in rapid decline. People are dying. When people have no purpose is when they die. I was reading, there, there was a documentary on blue zones, people who live over 100 in like high numbers. And one of the things they mentioned is that when people retire, that's like the most likely time of death for a person is it right after they retire because they no longer have a purpose. They're not doing anything. They're wasting away. So what we've seen with COVID, especially people sitting at home, they're, they're just wasting away. They're getting out of shape. Their blood is getting really bad. And they're like, you know, atrophying, getting depressed, a lot of suicides. So, you know, I don't know, long story short. Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. We do the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. So come back to check us out when we go live. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell. And we are also available on all podcast platforms for free if you want to listen to us there. Thanks for hanging out and we will see you all next time.